Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we just had the season four premiere of Superman and Lois on the CW. Of course, the final season of this show. And we had a two hour premiere, so two episodes. And of course, this season is a bit weird. Um, and honestly, you know, there's a lot of restrictions to this season, but, you know, I'd rather that than not get a final season at all. So we're getting this final season with, I believe, only 10 episodes and a very restricted cast. Like, literally, obviously, you got Tyler Hecklin and um, Bitsy Tulloch as Superman and Lois. And then we have uh, Lex Luthor in here now. And then the two sons, uh, John and Jonathan and Jordan. Jordan. Um, those are pretty much our characters for the show. All of the other supporting cast from the previous seasons, they will be here in guest roles. And in the first two episodes, it feels slightly kind of obvious with that. Um, with like one character from <laughs> just appearing in each episode. Um like, we got Sam Lane, of course, uh, Lois's father in the first episode, and then the second episode, Lana and her daughter were there, and I, I think um, John Henry Irons, aka Steel, is coming in next week's episode, so that's really exciting, but it, it does feel weird, but again, I'd rather that than no final season at all, and this was definitely a good start to the season. Um, it feels weird not having... Superman have such a big role in it, um, but th this isn't also isn't going to be a traditional episode review and breakdown that I usually would have done in the past. Um, I'm definitely not doing weekly episode reviews for this show, unfortunately, um, but I did want to make a video um, for this premiere, uh, not only because it is the final season, but there, there's just two main major things I want to point out. First of all, Brainiac is confirmed. Like, he was actually name-dropped in episode two by Lex Luthor. He mentioned Brainiac. It was so, like, casually said. He just said, like, oh, don't want to let that get to Brainiac. And then the conversation just moves on. And then as an audience member, we're all sitting here like, Wait, what did he just say? Um, Yeah, so Brainiac is happening. That's really cool. Um, And... The the thing with that, which I think is really interesting, um, I saw some, some people saying, funny how the two Superman shows this year, Superman and Lois and My Adventures with Superman, the two main villains of the season are Lex Luthor and Brainiac. So that's a cool reference right there. Um, but when it comes to Brainiac, something that I think is pretty cool about it is I believe Tom Cavanaugh is playing Brainiac in this season. Because, of course, Tom Cavanaugh, if you watch The Flash, you probably recognize him from there. He played the reverse Flash and all the various versions of Wells on that show. Um, but he's directed episodes of Superman and Lois in the past. And this season, again, because of the reduced episode count, they weren't able to squeeze him in as a director for any of the episodes. So they said, hey, let's get him on here as an actor. So they haven't revealed what his role is going to be, but there's been teases that now that we know for a fact Brainiac is involved here, I feel like Tom Cavanaugh is Brainiac. Because also just just that casting in general, I like it. Um, I feel like he's kind of got the look for it. Um, I'm really hoping to see a really comics accurate looking Brainiac in this show. Um, like, if they can top what Krypton did with Brainiac, at least looks-wise, I would be really excited. And, I mean, just given Superman and Lois' past with, like, Bizarro and all of the other villains that they've done for this show, I I think there's potential for this to be really good. Also, Tom Cavanaugh, hey, how cool would that be for him to play such two iconic DC supervillains in the Reverse Flash and Brainiac? That's pretty cool. Um... But yeah, so th this is on to Tom Cavanaugh's role in Superman and Lois Season 4. The Superman and Lois crew flew into Hall H of this year's San Diego Comic-Con to preview the new season and bid it a farewell with fans who have come to love them over the years. Well, it's first, it's not the season finale, helping clarify. There's a lot of cameos, more than any other season I would say this year, but that came out because it's a character in the comics, and I mean, it's like somebody met Tom Cavanaugh, went back in time, created this character, and then was like, hey, you guys should cast this guy, you know, like that. It was the easiest casting of all time. So 
like I said, I feel like Tom Cavanaugh's Brainiac is just like a really cool, interesting casting that just makes sense. And also, again, they've been teasing for a while now that there's going to be big characters in this season from the comics that you wouldn't expect. Um, and this could also lend into the fact of like why they're not using Brainiac in James Gunn's Superman movie. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, so Todd Helbing's comment was definitely intentional. Uh, that there will be more to come with Brainiac in future episodes. This is an interview uh, post-premiere. Um, so more Brainiac in future episodes. During a previous interview, Helbing told us that a significant character from the comics would be referenced early in the final season. You hear the name drop, then you start hearing that name drop more, and then you see that person eventually. Um, well, at least that's one mystery solved. So that there I think is really cool and definitely super excited for this final season we're getting Brainiac um I, I'm really excited for that um now besides the whole Brainiac thing of course um another big element of this season and leading off of our cliffhanger ending of season three is the death of Superman because obviously season three ended with the birth of Doomsday and Superman and Doomsday fighting and now that's kind of the the whole big element of this premiere, these first two episodes, is the death of Superman. And so spoilers from here on out now, if you haven't seen the two episodes, um, definitely go check them out. Um, yeah, so we have the death of Superman on display in this episode. I think it was executed really, really well. Um, I think his fight with Doomsday possibly could have been better. Um... But, you know, CW budget, so eh, it still looks pretty good for a CW budget. Um, Doomsday's design is interesting. Um, obviously better than Batman v Superman, but not quite as good as Krypton. Krypton, their designs for their, their villains on the show were so good. Um, Tyler Hecken, of course, was great here. And yeah, so by the end of the first episode... Superman is dead, like dead, dead, like Doomsday literally ripped out his heart. Um, and, you know, just as a comic book fan, just seeing the death of Superman storyline come to life and be um, that story told in live action is just really cool from a comic book standpoint. Um, and like, that's how it was in Batman v Superman. But um, this is done so much better. Um, mainly from an emotional standpoint, because that was one of the big issues with Batman v Superman and doing the death of Superman is like, you really didn't have enough time to grow attached to this character. And specifically when it came to the characters around him here, it hits so much harder because not only have you spent three seasons plus his appearances in Supergirl and the other crossovers, um, to get to know this version of Superman, but you've also spent all this time with Lois, their romance and their love stories together, and also his kids as well. Um, so this scene right here was really extremely emotional, especially um, for me in particular, um, because my dad recently passed away. Um, so what Jordan and Jonathan were going through in this scene and what Lois was going through um, it, it really hit home and it, it just really brought those emotions much, much more to the forefront for me and made this hit so much, um, more impactfully. Um, yeah, so that, I, it, it was done really well. And at the end of episode two, we get to see that, um, basically Superman is like dead, dead because, you know, it's pitched that, oh, he can be brought back to life, he can be revived if they get his heart back. But then Lex Luthor stomps on that and literally crushes it. So now we're presented with this hologram of Superman in the Fortress of Solitude. And, you know, just like how Jor-El was for Superman, for Clark. And so I'm kind of interested to see how this is going to go. Is there going to be some alternative way to end up bringing him back to life? Or is this it? Is this the only way we're going to see Superman in this season is through this hologram? Is that how this is going to be portrayed? I'm really interested to see how that goes because I could totally see that being a thing. But 
I also kind of doubt it just because, I mean, it's Superman and Lois, and, you know, like, it's the final season. I feel like he has to come back to life in some way, shape, or form. Um, you know, he's revived in the comics, obviously. Um, I haven't read the comic myself, so I don't know, but at least as far as I'm aware, he didn't get his heart physically ripped out. Um, so I don't know how that's going to work, but hopefully they do get him brought back to life. Um, it, I feel like it will probably be a slow build to it though. Um, but yeah, you know, Lois needs him. Jordan needs him. Jonathan needs him. The family needs him. We, we need our Superman and Lois. Um, so yeah, like I said, a, a great start to the season, I think. Um, it's sad that this show is coming to an end, but I think it's really cool because they handle storylines and characters really, really well on this show. So the fact that we're going to see Brainiac and Lex Luthor and the Death of Superman storyline continue to play out, um, that's something I'm really looking forward to. So anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about this premiere for Superman and Lois season four? Again, I'm not going to be doing weekly episodes, um, like reviews for every episode, but I obviously I will continue to watch. Maybe I'll do a video at the end of the season. Um, if something else big happens, like another big villain or character from the comics, you know, they said big cameos and all that. So if you have any theories, who else is going to show up? Let me know in the comments below. Um, and yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button so I keep it a date on if it goes on in the DC life.